On the court, Roger Federer has every shot in the book. Off the court, he has a portfolio of investments from years of raking in tens of millions of dollars in sponsorships. One of the most interesting investments he's made is in a company called On that is IPOing on the back of their collection of shoes. In today's video, we're breaking down the power of celebrity endorsement, the bull and the bear case for this equity, and whether or not we prefer to own On or Allbirds. I'm Hannah, this is Aaron, and you're watching The Piper Rundown. We analyze business and culture to help you win. Today's rundown is presented by Rivers Agile. Rivers Agile merges strategy with engineering to purposefully craft software solutions. Make sure you stick around until later in the video so you can hear one of Rivers Agile's actual customers talk about how much Rivers Agile has helped them. On which is such a sh weird short name for a company. I want to say on running or on holdings, just yes. on, on. Uh, is going public, hitting the US public markets in an IPO that could value the company around 3 billion. Now 3 billion is down from what they originally floated as their intended valuation as high as six, potentially four or five. Uh, but the initial reception from the institu institutional investors that would have to buy a block of shares in order for the company to come public has been somewhat tepid. And we're gonna talk a little bit about why later in this video. But if you've not familiar, been familiar with On, were you familiar with On before we started doing this I video? I was not. I, I was not either, despite the fact that Roger Federer is something of the face of the brand. After leaving Nike in 2019, Roger not only picked up a $30 million per year sponsorship from Uniqlo, for all the garb that he wears above his feet mm -hmm. during his tennis matches that are displayed on televisions around the world. Mm -hmm. But he also made an investment and started wearing On's uh, tennis specific shoe called yeah. the Roger Pro that recently dropped at a $200 retail price with the idea that he would hold equity in the brand, mm -hmm. not something that Nike usually grants to their biggest athletes. I guess they might for someone I guess they did for Jordan in that they created that individual sure. brand. I'm guessing they did something like that with LeBron just because he is such a sneaker seller. Yeah. Um, but not the case for Roger, hence why he left. Uh, the, other, the other connection here for Roger Federer is that it is a Swiss-based company based out of Zurich, Switzerland, founded in 2010, landed Roger nine years later. Um, and their whole shtick is that they say these shoes have soft landings and allow for explosive takeoffs. Someone else will have to be the judge of that because we are not wearing their shoes. We are the judge of their numbers though. Revenue in 2019, that first year with Roger, $297 million. 2020, $425 million. And for the first six months of 2021, they've done $315 million worth of revenue. So looking like somewhere in the 60 to 80% revenue growth range for a company already in the nine figure revenue level. Not too shabby. That being said, $1 million of net income loss in 2019, $27 million of loss in 2020. And for the last six months of 20, for the first six months of 2021, a $3 million net profit very common for companies to massage their numbers to show if they're close, only if they're close, to show a capacity for profitability right before they plan that public offering. Um, and in light of the pandemic, they were able to boost their direct-to-consumer revenue all the way up to 37% of the total revenue. So while they do have distribution in different running stores, other sporting goods stores, they do have a direct connection with at least a portion of their customer base and launched their first flagship store in New York City in 2020. Damn. How do you feel about Roger Federer? Are you a Federer gal? Are you a Nadal person, Joker? I do like Djokovic a lot, but... So will Roger... you be excited if Djokovic passes? Because Federer has the 20 grand slams. Right. Will you be excited? Yes, I, I, I generally will like to see people achieve greatness. And break records. And break records. You're just excited for any record to be broken. Yeah, but I love Roger. I, growing up watching him play was unlike anything else. I just, man, Roger's the goat. Big Roger fan. So let's talk about some of the comps to on. I don't know what really we can compare this to just because like 
we talked briefly before the rundown, Allbirds still has to IPO. That would be like the first one in my head. Um, but in order to better understand any company, it is helpful to look at comparable companies and competitors in the space. So Aaron, tell us about some of the comps. To well, you did a great tease there. You should be subscribing to this channel if you wanna hear that Allbirds IPO breakdown. Once we get the S1, once we're able to dig into the numbers, we will break all that down for you just like we do every single week. And every single week we find other companies that give us a framework for at least thinking about a company like this. The high end, Roger Federer's former sponsor, Nike, has a $269 billion market cap. If you've read the book Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, you know that they broke through, they got their start with running shoes. He went over to Asia, found some exceptionally cheap manufacturers that were able to deliver a quality shoe. Him and a salesperson ran around the nation until they were able to get sponsorships with some track stars. And now they are a lifestyle brand, a uh, provider of apparel and sporting goods and shoes for a litany of different sports. Mm -hmm. So that is the idealized version that anyone selling you on the on brand would be saying. What, uh, what was the pre, I can't think of the guy's, the runner's name um, that was like their first big star. Roger Federer is, you know, the reason that Nike has Serena and LeBron and Katie and all these other different characters. Um, that's, that's the vision that they would paint. It is far from reality. Uh, given the fact that Nike's able to run a profit and on struggles to do so as a starting point. Some of the other foot, uh, footwear retailers, though, are not seeing particularly strong performance and have definitely been hindered by the lack of people headed into malls because of pandemic stuff and the proclivity to buy online as opposed to going into the store. One of the last bastions of in-person sales, trying on a shoe mm -hmm. before... Uh, you actually Absolutely. buy it. But if you can get that sent to your house, send it back as was um, uh, basically led by uh, Zappos, mm -hmm. then it's not such a pain point. Uh, Foot Locker has a $6 billion market cap. Calaris, which is the owner of Famous Footwear among some other brands, has a $960 million market cap. And Genesco that owns Johnson & Murphy, Journeys, Lids, some classic mall brands, $960 million market cap as well. Allbirds will be much more telling. At the end of the year, once both of those companies are public, you will have multiple kind of pure play uh, shoe plays that you can make. And digging into the numbers of those two companies will give you uh, some insights as to which one you should prefer. Yeah, absolutely. Again, make sure you hit subscribe so you can stick around and get that comparison. Smash that subscribe. Smash. Let's move on to the meme factor. If you're unfamiliar with the meme factor, it is where Aaron and I give our meme ability score for a company on a scale from one to five. Three is completely neutral, not memeable at all. Five is off the charts, positive memes. Think Elon Musk and Tesla. One is negative memes. Bad memes, not Bad memes. naughty memes. Memes that hurt the company and their brand. So, Aaron, what is your meme factor score? So I came in to this video thinking I was gonna give it a 3.6, and that was basically through the lens of Roger Federer is one of the most high, highly paid, visible athletes on the planet. Sure. And yet, despite the fact that he's the face of this brand, he's been wearing the shoe forever, I had not it. ever heard of any of their products before. Yeah. Yeah, and so that tells me and then I just thought more about running. Mm -hmm. And running isn't even like vegetarianism where someone might even humor you and hear you talk about it or tell people or oh, CrossFit, so, right? So if you true. start talking to me about your running routine, I'm, I'm literally just gonna walk away. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna like look at my phone and not even pretend like I'm listening to you because I don't care. Hannah does this at least once a week. She tells me about this run club that she's in <laughs> and I just completely zone out. So I'm downgrading from a 3.6 to a 3.3 .3 for my meme wow. factor. Well, very informative rants on the meme factor there. <laughs> um, yeah, my meme factor score is pretty low as well. Not negative low, but it is shocking, especially with like, 
the Olympics just happening and you hearing about these global brands. Maybe it's big. Teams. My only thought, it's in 50 different countries. Maybe it's bigger in Europe. That's the only thing I can think yeah, of. Yeah, it has to be. But yeah, my my mean factor score is going to be 3.7. Mm. So. It's cool. It's tennis. Yeah, I do. I'm very bullish on tennis. Speaking of bullish, on, well, before we get to the bull in the bear case, let's hear from one of Rivers Agile's customers. And wait, what was it? We've got a design. We've got the vision. Who can develop this thing? That's where we got tuned into Rivers Agile, and they gave a presentation on the Agile methodology. It went so well that our VP of R and D was like, "Hey, maybe we should be using Agile in some of our manufacturing projects." All right, let's pull it together, Anna. On to the bull and the bear case. The bull case, which we kind of just kicked in the knees here is brand equity and distribution. For sure. Those are non-trivial things to build. And if the on-brand means something to someone, and it must because they're doing on pace for $630 million yeah. worth of sales, and they have distribution into all these stores and direct to consumer channels, that is not trivial. Mm -hmm. It is so easy to say a shoe is a shoe is a shoe is a shoe. But the reason that you get the low production costs, the ability to scale this out, if you read a book like Shoe Dog, is because you've built up to enough of a quantity that your per shoe margin has improved enough that you have the capacity to run a profitable yeah. business. It's actually really expensive to just make one shoe. Yeah. It's way less expensive to make 100,000 or multiple hundred thousands of those pairs of shoes. Right. And so it is non-trivial to have built that and is differentiated despite the fact that at first glance that might not seem so. Yeah. If you hit that, Shoes do become a relatively high margin business. Not as sexy as software, not as sexy as IP and media, but there's a reason Nike is a fantastically large and profitable company Absolutely. with all sorts of fantastic endorsement deals that they can shell out. There's a lot of margin in each one of those shoes that they sell that they can then distribute into their marketing campaign. So once again, on nowhere near the revenue run rate or the profitability of Nike, but if they were to start to trend in that direction, there are these... Uh, economies of scale that other companies would not necessarily be privy to. And then finally, this is a little nuance here, a relatively new free trade agreement between the EU, where Switzerland is based, and Vietnam, where these shoes are manufactured, hmm. will create stronger, better margins in the um, forthcoming sale because it's a relatively new trade agreement. So all these little things that help their margins are the number one thing that I'd be looking for and the other thing we'll dig into in the Allbirds uh, video sometime down the line. Damn, just a sprinkle of global economics here on the rundown. You know, I'm multifaceted. <laughs> on the bear side, you've got a uh, concern here. The sustained performance edge of a running shoe, every single design is knocked off by competitors. Sure. Every single feature, we keep referencing Allbirds, but like they had the wool and then all these other brands just launched yeah. wool shoes. And it's like, okay, the what's breathability is the difference insane. here, right? Yeah. Similarly, one of the other speculations is that with COVID, running was one of the safer physical yeah. activities to do. You go, you're by yourself, someone gets close, you're running, they're not going to catch you, right? Some people might get caught. Hannah would get caught. I wouldn't get caught because I'm fast as hell. Bitch! What? <laughs> um, so is that a sustained trend? Do people get back to beach volleyball and other associated group sports right. and leave running behind because there's a lot funner things to do with your time potentially and then finally roger federer is 39 this is not some upstart young early in his career character this isn't the ball brothers in their ball shoes not that those worked out particularly well but he is close to retirement to me there's a little bit of i'm getting out while the getting's good Perfect. i could be wrong here but a liquidity event right as you're near the retirement point, cashing a check, and who knows how long he continues to go. Tom Brady and other characters defy the odds. But he, he's in the twilight stage. And so there is a concern there that if his star fades to some degree as he's just no longer playing in Wimbledon and these other type of events, do they have the same distribution, brand building horsepower that helped them really rise over the last couple of years. I really hope so. All I can think about is once Rogers retired, him collabing with On again to create a line of slippers called Off. That's a free one. That one's free. <laughs> that is. That's free. <laughs> Next one we went ten percent. Boom.
Well, that's the rundown. Thank you for watching. If you stuck around this long. Man, wearing white makes it look so tan. Credit to you. Credit to you for being tan. We appreciate you and your, and your viewership. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you, maybe, maybe you got to get out in the sun a little bit more. Yeah, I'm sorry. We would like to read a comment from one of our last videos from one of you loyal viewers. Uh, ooh, this one's good. This is from our Endeavor IPO video, which was a while ago we put up. Wealth Gainers. Ooh, wealth gainers commented, this guy is clued up. So good, thanks. I've never been described as clued up before, at clued least to my up. knowledge. That's a, that's a great compliment. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. It really helps us out. We have a goal of hitting 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We are well on our way to doing that. Thank so. you for being a part of that if yes. you are a loyal subscriber. Thank you. And what would you like to say to the non-subscribers? Um, I hope you're paler and more tepid than Aaron. Wow. <laughs>